Ridley. What could have happened?
No. 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 No, you got it wrong. Stay away. Stay away. You have to calm down.
Closer. Don't come any closer. Stay away from me. Easy. I won't come any closer until you say so. My name is Samus. I'm an independent bounty hunter. I know the situation here, and I know how you must feel. I'm here to secure your safety. May I come closer? What's your role at this facility? I'm responsible for all operations. My name is Madeline Bergman. Wait a minute. I met another woman who called herself Madeline Bergman. What's going on here? What you met was MB. She's an android. She was created with the intellectual data of Mother Brain, and consequently developed Mother Brain's consciousness as well. What? The Federation's foolish plan. Mother Brain's rampage. Everything that happened here was just as Madeline, or rather MB, had told me. The person who sabotaged the system to stop MB's rampage and sent out the distress call had to be the person standing before me. It had to be Madeline Bergman. MB was the artificial intelligence originally developed to regenerate and control Space Pirate Special Forces. Because we wanted it to control these Special Forces through telepathy, we were forced to model its infrastructure after Mother Brain. At that time, MB didn't have a human form. 
Before long, we started to see the viability of creating Metroid clones. Once we did, MB started to take on her current shape. But why? Because we needed the first Metroid hatchling to recognize MB as its mother, she had to take on the form of a living thing. With that as our theoretical basis, we were able to create the ideal relationship with the Metroid, one that wasn't based on dominance or control. I remembered the baby hatching before my eyes. When it attacked Mother Brain in order to save me, that was the result of the kind of ideal relationship they were trying to develop with MB. They found the perfect means of control and started propagating Metroids in Sector Zero. At the same time, they were conducting genetic manipulation experiments to create unfreezable Metroids. Apparently, the queen I met earlier was the first of these propagated Metroids to mature. They wanted to preserve her as a control specimen, so they had left her genes unaltered. The fact that she'd grow into a queen was something not even Madeline and her team could have predicted. Only special infants had the genetic coding to become queens. Once our MB was in a human form, she excelled. As an interface between us and them, her skills with personal interaction humanized her to a great extent. If my theory is correct, this is going Fast. to be a groundbreaking multi-system for artificial intelligence. Her confidence was unwavering, and her ability to learn was greater than we'd expected. But then, she developed emotions, then a nascent sense of herself. She began asserting her own thoughts, and her opinions began to contradict ours. It's quite typical for artificial intelligence to evolve as a result of self-analysis. However, there's no precedent for an AI like MB developing emotions. It's possible that her interactions with the Metroids brought it about, but we don't know for sure. The newly hatched infant took to her like his mother. And perhaps at that moment, MB began to develop a soul. It was all conjecture, but the idea wouldn't leave my mind. And that was when we decided to alter her AI program. A human-like existence, but one without feelings. To make MB less than human, the researchers had to deny her that consciousness. I knew this, but in my heart, I felt sympathy for MB. On the day we were going to alter MB's program, right before my eyes, come on, come on. No! I watched her being restrained. Stop! What are you doing to her? These orders are from above. Take her away. Wait! Wait. Madeline! She reached out to me and asked Calm me down. for help. No! But there was nothing I could do. What? What's happening? My presence no. that day caused a disturbing reaction in her. She was fixated on me. Madeline had taken to calling MB Melissa. She took the initials MB and told the AI they stood for oh, Melissa, Melissa Bergman. It looks great on you. MB liked that name. It made it sound like Madeline was calling her her daughter. Once she felt abandoned and hunted by that same Madeline, MB telepathically commanded the special forces to revolt. The facility fell into complete chaos and suffered widespread damage. Oh. 
<laughs> MB was trying to get revenge on the Federation Army and on us. It's possible all humans have become the target of her hatred. With the space pirates under her control, she was able to propagate the Metroids in Sector Zero, even creating a Queen Metroid. She was well armed and planning her attack on the Galactic Federation. But Adam and I crushed her plan completely. And now, who could guess where she was and what she planned next? She's backed into a corner. And her hatred is entirely focused on you and me right now. <gasps> MB! Wait, MB, calm down. Please listen. Madeline, step back. You... I mean, we were wrong. It's all over. Madeline! I was not wrong. The humans were foolish, and I was forced to bring judgment on them. And yet, because of you, I failed. You must understand the weight of your crime. You must pay the price for what you've done. Please, MB. We have to get past this. No. You will all be judged. It's okay now. I won't ever fail you again. I promise. I'm so sorry. Melissa. Oh, Melissa, it looks great on you. That's your name.
Samasarin, I heard what happened. You performed admirably. You can leave the rest to us. Unfortunate what happened to Commander Malkovich. And to think that his entire unit was annihilated. Truly a tragic day. Would you agree, Aaron? Sadly, with them gone, you're just an outsider. And given your unofficial status, I cannot allow you contact with the witness. With your predilection for transporting illegal cargo like infant Metroids, I must ask that you restrict your... <laughs> Time for the lady to go home. Someone escort her. Yes, sir. Time for us to go. Come on, princess. What? Stop right there. Who are you? Anthony Hicks, sir. Galactic Federation Platoon 7. I need to secure the safety of any survivors, Commander Malkovich's orders, and the purpose of this mission. What? Authorized by the Chairman of the Galactic Federation. Of course. What do you mean, the Chairman? Oh, man, you guys made it here quick. I mean, if I hadn't stopped the engines, we might have missed each other. <sighs> how something good can come out of something bad. Whoa, didn't mean to wake her. Guess I ought to be quiet. Anthony was trying to be courteous to Madeline. She was exhausted and had only just fallen asleep. She needed the rest. She had a lot of explaining to do once she got to Galactic Federation headquarters. For herself. And for Melissa. Still can't get my head around it. What a crazy mission. <sighs> Anthony sighed as he muttered to himself. What would have happened if we hadn't been called there? Might the furious MB have attacked the Galactic Federation and brought about its utter destruction? Melissa wasn't insane, no. One day, a consciousness simply bloomed within her. And those that caused it to bloom, the humans, called it insanity. I was the insane one. That was what Madeline muttered softly as she sank into sleep. The selfish conceits of humans drove envy to violence. It was their distorted perceptions and greed that awoke such fury in the fledgling girl's heart. Her thought was to punish the foolish and conceited. But MB could not complete her mission. As Melissa, she was defeated.
With their one vulnerability overcome, the Metroids were indestructible. If some fool just following orders had taken the savage creatures to those who sought them, I can't imagine what would have happened if Adam hadn't recognized the looming danger. But the cost was far too great. Why did Adam have to pay with his life? For me, I couldn't believe he was dead. For the first time, I questioned his choice. No objections, right lady? I heard Adam's voice in my head. and I knew in my heart that he had made the right decision. Just as he had so many years ago. In that moment, I swore not to grieve his death. And for the first time, I gave him a thumbs up, just in case he was watching over me. His amused expression looked as though he wanted to say something. His face and Adam swirled together. That last smile as Adam drifted away.
Ultimately, the decision was made to destroy the bottle ship, a mission that will most likely be carried out in the next day or two. I'm heading toward the bottle ship now. I'm going to rescue something that was left there, something that can't be replaced.